Hello everyone and welcome to the UDK Basics Tutorial Part 4. In this tutorial we're gonna start off by making a video importing method. To start off we're gonna head to place and make a new object. So let's just pick some static mesh and I'm gonna pick this wall right here. To import a video, you have to pick what video you want. Then you gotta download the following application. It is called Rad Video Tool and it's the Bing video. After you download it, select the file that you want. In this case, I'm gonna go for this one. Then after you select it, click on Bank It. It's gonna ask you for some properties, but for now we are not gonna mess with any of this. All we have to do is just name it whatever you want so for this one um, let's call it video background and then click bank it might take a while it depends on how the quality is and how long the video is in this case it does not take that much after that you click done and you are done you can quit the application then you head to your content browser and then you click import. Find your located bank video. In this case, it is right here. So I'm going to import it. To name it, you can just name it whatever you want. Video background one. And let's keep that to make it one as well. And Keep that the same and click OK. You're going to end up with the video. However, we can't actually put that on anything. As you can see, it forbids us to put it anywhere. So, in order to avoid that problem, we have to make it from textures to a new material. So what we have to do is create new material. Then name it the same, keep it in the same package and click OK. After that, double click on it, and you're going to see this. Let's drag this out. And here you can edit the properties of the texture in order to make it a material. We're not going to mess with any of the stuff except for this one. So in order to do that, we're going to have to select the black and drag it to diffuse. That way it becomes material as the following on the edit object. Then after that, you all you have to do is just click apply changes. It's going to do the rest and then you can just exit it out. Then all you have to do is just apply it to the wall or the object that you want it to apply to. And there we can see some distorted video, but if we place it on a solid place, we can see that it works fine. Next, we're going to take a look at the player. The player, as we can see if we run the game, is a first person shooter. However, if we want to make it a third person view, we would have to go to Kismet and actually edit it ourselves. To do that, we're going to go to New, Action, Misc, and Console Command. Console Command changes the whole game uh, settings and characters. So for the first command we're gonna say behind view. Then we're gonna attach the players. To do that you go to new condition. To do that you go to new event player and player spawned Oh, what the f Next, we're going to attach the player. To do that, all you have to do is just select it and then click new object variable using player start zero. If you want to apply this to all the players, all you have to do is just click on on new variable player 
and player and you will have all the players for this one we're not going to use all players then all you have to do is just attach the target and then we have to select when the console commands gives this order into making a third person view so to do that we're going to use a click of a button to do that go to new event input and then key button pressed now we're gonna put for this one I'm gonna make it personally I would favor um, pressed attach it to it and to assign what um, buttons you want to use I'm gonna say here let's put uh, Q and then hit enter and now we should be able to make it functional as a third person view so when I click Q it's supposed to transform to a uh, third person let's check the kismet oh okay so let's not use player start let's actually use the variable of uh, all the players and then just attach it and just to make sure that not all the players become third person uh, we're gonna deselect uh, all players so uncheck that and then test it out it should be working as we can see here we are in third person view and you can shoot and move around next off we're gonna take a look on how to move objects in the last episodes, we used rigid bodies in order to make a real physical abiding for the natural laws of physics, just a regular object. So we're going to use this object in order to just make it movable using our player. To do that, go to content browser, then search for some static meshes. Um, and for this one, let's just use a rock and then let's just drag it there now for this one we don't actually need rigid bodies but we're gonna have to convert it into a um, uh, mover then we're gonna actually edit it so to begin go to kismet make sure the rock is selected create object and then create a trigger and then bring the trigger over to it and make it a little bigger so that like we can pick it up this is the space that we, we're gonna be able to uh, click and actually pick it up when we click it so that seems about good then we're gonna attach this we're gonna attach the rock into the trigger so what we have to do is go to new action actor and then attach to actor so we're gonna use the target as the rock itself and the trigger as the attachment then we're gonna assign that it actually begins the attachment uh, from the beginning so go to new event level load it and then attach that to it then we're gonna actually figure out how and who can uh, move this object using the trigger so to do that we're gonna create new event using trigger one and then click on used make sure that aim to interact is off and make sure that it's infinitely usable so we're gonna make this zero and everything else should be fine um, then you're gonna go to new variable boolean and then name that let's see make it name key then go to new variable named variable and name it key as well that way it'll be defined as this as the boolean then we're gonna go to new condition comparison and then compare boolean then we're gonna attach that to this 
so you can compare the bullions. If it's false, it's gonna let it go. If it's true, it's gonna take a hold of the rock. Then attach this to it, and then we're gonna make new action actor, attach to actor, and copy that and paste it. This way, we'll make two separate ways for the true or false. Next, attach to them, and then we're going to go to new action, set variable boolean, copy this as well, and attach the target as the key that we created. Then we have to click click on the player. Actually, let's just make it a new variable player player. Deselect all players, copy it, set it as target, and then select a rock and attach it. Copy it again, attach it. Then we're gonna create the false and true. Make sure those are connected as well. So to do that, new variable boolean and copy it. To make it true, it's kind of binary, so make it one. And then that should be about all of it. Let's make sure everything's under there. Yep. And let's test it out. Oh, we actually let's change this one to yeah, let's make keep it Q. And then, so this one can be BE. And then. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so it seems like it's working. However, there is uh, no collision on this one. So we're going to have to go new properties. Collision. Collide, no collision, so make it block all and make the trigger a little bit more bigger and then let's test it out so as we can see we can drag it with us it's a little bit big so let's make it a little bit smaller it should be good and then we can carry it around and then move it around And uh, yeah, seems to be working. Thank you guys for watching this video. Stay tuned and subscribe for part 5. And I will see you next time. Peace.